boy, look at all the frost. It's that time of year for me, folks. So I think we should head into the shop and do something I haven't done yet. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so I've laid out some of my trail trucks in a row. Uh, this is so the people that have been writing in and asking for different comparisons on different trail trucks or what kind of trail trucks are there or which ones do I prefer or which one is best. Uh, all of these questions come in all the time and I hope that this will give some of the viewers that are considering getting different types of trail trucks or wanting to find one that suits uh, their type of hobby style uh, gives you kind of an idea of what's out there. Now this certainly isn't every type of trail truck and yes I do have uh, duplicates and different trail trucks as well in my collection um, but these ones basically kind of cover what's available even though I'm missing a few but it gives you a general idea. Okay, so recently I've been working with uh, the G-Made product. This is the, the new Komodo at the time of this filming. This is something that's come out. All of these vehicles are electric. All of them are one-tenth scale. All of these ones are four by fours. Now, like I was saying, the Komodo here comes currently as a kit. Uh, G-Made has made this one as a successor to their uh, G-Made Sawback. Now, the Sawback, the kit itself, when I got it, was quite different than this kit here. Uh, and what I mean by that, for example, I'll just flip it over. Sorry, it's a little dirty. All of my trucks have been used. Uh, not too many shelf queens around here, but not, nothing wrong with that. I just like to use my trucks. These ones actually, uh, the sawback has leaf spring or leaf sprung suspension. You can see the chassis, they've got the roller wheels underneath. Uh, they kind of get dirty and they jam up with stuff, but they're there and the skid plate works pretty well. It's a steel chassis. They call it the GS01 chassis. Underneath, you got the motor plate. I'm using a Savox waterproof servo. Uh, this winch didn't come with it, but it gives you a general idea of what's under the hood. There you can see these type of shocks right there. These are very dirty and they don't work very well. So I've got to take these apart and give them a rebuild or change them out. The Komodo itself came with a lot of these accessories, the mirrors, the bumpers, the, the plastic grill, uh, the light buckets. The light kit did not come with it. The roof rack did though. And on the inside, I have changed the shocks. These are King shocks. Uh, and uh, I've got a brushless in there for some, you know, pretty good torque and speed. I also have a waterproof servo from Savox. Same chassis but different suspension as you can see, no leaf springs, all four link. Okay, so there's those two. Then I get into some of my axial collection uh, and I've pulled out some specific ones so you guys know what they are. This one, even though it's been jacked up and viewers of the show uh, um, uh, recognize this truck as Pinky, my wife's uh, vehicle, this body style, this Toyota, is the Honcho, the SCX10 Honcho uh, from Axial. Now, it's been all beefed up and, you know, a lot of the things have changed on here. But the same kind of goes. This has a four link, it's all plastic. Now there is good things about that. Plastic slides very easy. Uh, and, uh, and you know, even though it does uh, have some bendability or pliability to those links, uh, they don't break very often. Either do the aluminum ones over there, uh, but this remains nice and light. Pinky has always done well because it is a very light vehicle. You can also see these plastic sliders. The base plate, the slide plate here, uh, or the transmission plate, is much smaller than the Komodo in comparison. Look at that. And you'll notice on the Komodo there's no more wheels or roller wheels like there was on the Sawback. Okay, so there's that one four-link suspension. 
Here is something that has been discontinued. Uh, and again, this was a kit that I built. This is a dedicated rock crawler. Here they're experimenting with different things. A very thin uh, body to itself, right? Like a very thin uh, chassis. The reason why is to not get hung up on rocks. And we also had these plastic sliders that went over the aluminum links because aluminum tends to get caught on things and gets hooked up as it gets scratched. Now, this is all four link, but it's a dedicated different type of four link that really allows for a lot of articulation. This is a fairly slow crawler run by a motor on each axle, which was commonly referred to and is commonly referred to as MOA, motor on axle. I got a nice titanium geared servo in there, nice and fast. And for those that are wondering, <clears throat> I'll tell you on these ones too, these are 2.2 uh, Proline mashers on Vanquish hubs. Uh, you can't get these pink rings anymore they were the last of their kind. Uh, this bumper uh, came from RC Rock Armor uh, from my buddy Sam down there. I ordered those up. These uh, pink axles, uh, I got them on Amazon. I don't know if they're available anymore, but for pinky anything. So moving on, two FXRs, 235 turn motors. Oddly enough, even though I've used this vehicle a ton, I've never had to change the motors or ESCs. But now that I said that, I'm sure I will. <laughs> Here is uh, another SCX-10. Axial came out with a ton of re-releases, uh, a ton of different designs, like the deadbolt and all that. This one is very much stock, so you can see what's going on. The only thing that's been swapped is for a waterproof servo. You'll see in the beginning, they actually mounted the battery up front. Here's where the battery got mounted and it actually was supposed to help with the weight, keeping the weight over the front of the tires, the front axle. Works very well. On Pinky, I went ahead and upgraded to uh, uh, an aluminum spur gear, not aluminum, pardon me, a steel spur gear, as well as steel drive shafts because these big tires, if they get stuck in ruts, they can actually create quite a bit of torque with that 27 turn motor and a nice decent small tooth pinion. So this one here, because everything is stock, this had the already quote upgraded uh, newer design drive shafts. Notice the links are still plastic on the bottom, keeping the truck nice and light. And these drive shafts, you know, if you get too much power behind them, they tend to twist like a, like a piece of licorice, like a Twizzler. You'll see them start to twist. So this is one of the upgrades I've always suggested is to go ahead and get yourself some uh, uh, solid aluminum or steel drive shafts. But like I said, keeping it nice and light can be the difference if, if you can go up that hill or if you're getting stuck in a rut. Here is a custom built Wraith, but the cage on this is actually very similar to what's out there now. Axial did do multiple releases of the Wraith. Uh, if you go on Axial's site, it's very clear on explaining what the differences are. Now this one does have Vanquish uh, axle housings on here. It does have the upgraded servo. It does have a whole bunch of upgrades, but the reason I'm even showing you this vehicle is to give you a general idea about what the Wraith looks like and what the shape of it is. This one's slightly heavier because underneath, check it out, this is a giant aluminum skid plate, titanium links, as well as solid drive shafts because there's quite a bit of power in this beast, right? So I'll move that out of the way. The Wraith is a great machine. All of these machines are actually great in their own way. And I can't tell you what's best out of these machines because that's all individual opinion uh, on what you like to do with your machines while you're out trailing or rock crawling. So it's personal opinion. That's why I have a different collection. They all do different things. Now, RC four-wheel drive, here we go. Here's two uh, vehicles from RC four-wheel drive. Uh, this was my Galenda 2. Uh, I did have a crack in the back, so I ended up chopping it. You'll see I don't have wheel nuts on this right now, uh, only because I set it up for you guys for this video. The bumper itself with the fair lead, all this was uh, uh, accessories from RC four-wheel drive that I purchased. Uh, along with the winch and ba -ba -ba, this double LED light, which is quite bright on a three cell. Now I will lift this up carefully. You can see under the hood, it's a fairly clean vehicle. 
Now, everything on this vehicle is aluminum. This even features, as I turn around, okay, check it out, a transmission style of motor. Here's where the motor sits on the front, goes into the transmission, a drive shaft out to a transfer case, and a transfer case out to each individual axle. Now, aluminum hangers, everything on this vehicle is, is more built for a scale driving experience. Same thing with their awesome uh, truck as well called the Trail Finder 2. They've had many, many trucks at RC Four Wheel Drive and they still offer a lot of trucks. But these are some of their more popular ones. The Trail Finder 2, a hard body. It does come in multiple pieces, but you can screw it together. These fins are aftermarket, or pardon me, these side flares, uh, aftermarket, and the light kit and whatnot, also aftermarket. Here we go. This actually has a two-stage transmission. So brushed motor to the transmission. Here is a shifting servo that shifts from low and high gear, which gives you a nice grunt pulling power, uh, as well as speed when you need it. Now I did do a dual uh, shock setup here, as well as leaf springs. <laughs> My tires are dripping from the creek run I did two days ago. Uh, <laughs> this also goes to the transfer case, and from the transfer case, the two drive shafts out to the aluminum axles. So I do have a body lift kit on this, as well as uh, um, the winch controller and everything else I have lined in. So that gives you a closer look. This bumper is aftermarket. Uh, it is RC four wheel drive as well. It's different from this one, you'll see. Yeah, but I like these bumpers. They do add some weight to your truck. As you can see, I've had experience with light trucks and heavy trucks, and again, it's just the type of scaling that you're doing for that day is the type of setup, you know, whatever you wanna do. So here is a Vatera uh, Ascender, one of my favorite trucks as well. Uh, this is a Chevy K5 Blazer that's been done up, also Rigid Industries. I love the, the black and red and white look. So the mirrors came with it, the light did not. You'll see here, I've got everything kind of hooked in. I have an S1 sound kit in there. It's a speaker. I've just wrapped it up in uh, waterproof tape really to kind of make it as a splash guard where we can still have the sound of the motor that's throttle driven uh, coming from the vehicle. I did upgrade uh, the shocks. These are the 100 millimeter Kings that I have on the uh, sender down there at the end. Isn't that nice? So there we go, uh, as well as a waterproof servo. Now, there are different, you know, they all look the same, but they are mildly different, like the way the steering is set up with the panhard on here. Uh, I did get 2.2 size mud slingers on here. The, uh, the skid plate on the bottom is a little bit different. It's smaller, uh, but longer. So you can have different bodies. Uh, the transmission is basically the same between all of these. Uh, and really, <laughs> this one I've upgraded to heavy duty gears in the differentials. I love the way we can access the spool and pinion on these axles. Doesn't that look like a nice straight axle? Um, so this is really easy to work on, whereas other ones are more challenging, like these aluminum ones, you kind of got to take them apart and it's a big ordeal. Same with the aluminum ones here, uh, but the original Wraith is actually pretty easy. All of these take time. For new people, don't fool yourself. This all takes maintenance, just like real full-scale vehicles. <laughs> okay, this is a small um, uh, Ford uh, Tamiya High Lift, or Tamiya, or Tamiya, depending on where you guys are in the world, is pronounced differently. Uh, this one is very small tires. This was built very close to stock, except for this add on the back here with the lights and a multi-function control unit for sound lights it does shake the truck it has a shaker that that makes it look like it's rumbling when it's uh, making noise and has a three-stage transmission there are a variety of these uh, Tamiya high lifts that you can get uh, I've also featured a Toyota Tundra on the truck my uh, on the show my black one uh, and this one is quite a bit of fun heavy-duty 
Uh, here we go with the last one I'll feature today. This is another Tamiya. Uh, this is the Unimog CC01 tub style chassis. Now a lot of people are conflicted about this. Some people love them, some people hate them. Some people think that they're not um, they're not worth it or they're not as capable. I had a light kit stuck there on, on one of these hooks. I love this vehicle, to be honest with you. My friend Charlie gave me this truck, and even though it's a tub style chassis, and what I mean by that is that it's actually a tub, right? Everything fits on the inside. Less like these all have uh, ladder frames, right? So you can bolt everything on. This one is different. Everything fits in here, and really, the articulation is not as much. It still has a suspension, but I find this to be one of the most realistic vehicles on the market. Yeah, see, look at not super high quality. You can find these really inexpensively. Uh, you know, you're looking around 300 bucks. Uh, if you if you want to look around, you can certainly find it for less. Um, and there's different bodies you can get, right? Same type of steering servo but different steering setup altogether. Really guys, I've done awesome videos with this truck and I actually enjoy it quite a bit. And there's different uh, bods for it, like you get the Jeep, you can get a whole bunch of uh, different bodies for the CC01. Okay, so there you go, 11 trucks. Uh, all generally the same, but all generally different. Uh, made by different manufacturers. I'm gonna put a link to a video I've made for each one of these trucks in the video description box down below. If you wanna find out more about them, cool. I'll also uh, list out what they are and who they're made by. I'm not gonna post uh, links to websites because Google can find those uh, sites that are closest to you. So give that a try. Uh, hopefully today has been a helpful video for you uh, and it kind of gives you an idea of what's out on the market for you guys to play with. Again, there's like the HPI Crawler King, there's other custom trucks out there, there's a ton of others, but at least this one gives you an idea of, of uh, what's out there that, that you can go and look at now. So anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the show. If I've earned a subscription or like click from you for the information provided, I certainly appreciate that. And I hope to see you again in the next episode of RC Adventures. Go out and have some fun.